Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're safe and well. In this video we'll be discussing air gun pellet trajectory. So let's roll the titles. Okay, here we are back on the white screen then, and as you can see, we are going to cover Air Ground Trajectory 101, or the Beginner's Guide to the Flight of Air Gun Pellets. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, we're going to go through a couple of definite, more than a couple of definitions, a few definitions firstly, so there's no confusion later on with the terminology. So as you can see, what we have here is a, um, an HFT, typical HFT target, um, sometimes referred to as a flop over target because when you hit the uh, kill zone, which is the black circle here on the target, it will fall over or flop over. Some people refer to them as uh, tin chickens. But to be honest, um, I've never seen an HFT target in the shape of a chicken. But there you go, they're mostly mammals and birds, other birds rather than chickens, other than chickens. <laughs> right, so crosshairs then. Here you can see we have the target and we have the reticle from our scope lined up. And you can see where the, um, the horizontal and vertical lines meet. That's what we refer to as crosshairs. And so in this view, we're assuming that the target would be at our uh, zero distance, in which case uh, if the target is the same distance we've zeroed the scope then we would affix the crosshairs of our um, reticle in the center of the target and um, and shoot and then hopefully all being well we will get a kill, the target will fall over or if it's a, another kind of target we will score a bullseye. So that's crosshairs. Right, this um, holdover is uh, probably uh, more relevant to um, HFT and hunting in general than target work, where for target work you tend to shoot at, uh, at the same range uh, time and time again. So, holdover is where we pick an aim point below the crosshairs on the reticle, so you can see here we're using the second mill dot below the reticle as the aim point. And you can see the crosshairs then is positioned above the, the target we're shooting at, the kill zone or the bullseye. So we're actually holding the crosshairs over the top of the target. So that's how we get hold over. So conversely then, in this instance, we're using uh, the second mill dot of the reticle above the crosshairs as the aim point. So the crosshairs are below uh, what we're aiming at, in which case this is referred to as a hold under. Okay, so that's the difference between hold over and hold under. And um, you'll know, understand as we go on why I needed to define those two. So then let's go back to shooting your air rifle. Now this is the top view of your air rifle and this assumes, uh, we need to get this one out of the way first, but this assumes that um, there's no air movement. So there's no wind or any other uh, things acting on your pellet as it comes out the barrel. So looking from the top of the rifle, the line of sight from your scope is absolutely is identical to uh, the line of the barrel. So without any air movement, looking from the top, the, per the pellet uh, from the vertical perspective will move along the same line as the barrel's pointing to the target. Side view, however, things change because we have to deal with a thing called gravity. Now your pellet, 
whichever size pellet you use has a mass and anything that you uh, that has a mass is going to be affected by gravity so as soon as your pellet leaves the barrel gravity takes effect and is going to start pulling the pellet down towards the ground now the gravity is going to have a greater effect uh, depending on how heavy your pellet is so the heavier the pellet the greater effect of gravity and the sooner it will be pulled towards the ground. So the lighter the pellet, uh, the flatter the trajectory, because it's gonna take longer to hit the ground than say something like a 2.2 or a 2.5 pellet. So consequently, we, with our um, air rifles, we, we have in fact an air powered cannon. Now you've all seen cannons where um, the barrel is pointed more up in towards the air so that it fires the cannonball and lobs it up into the air in an arc to hit the target. And that's the same thing that we are doing with our air rifle. We're going to be lobbing the pellet up in an arc so that it hits the target before it hits the ground. So in effect, from the side, unlike from the top we have two diverging lines we have the line of sight of the scope which ignoring the curvature of the earth and um, if you're a flat earther you'll probably appreciate that um, but we can assume ignoring the curvature of the earth that the line of sight of the scope is for the most part going to be parallel to the ground obviously that might change if you're shooting a target that's up in a tree uh, but for the most part for this for this for this uh, situation we're going to assume that it's parallel with the ground so in order to to get our um, uh, pellet any distance to our target the line of the barrel must be at a greater angle than the line of sight of the scope and I've put the angle in there because if you've seen um, uh, I think it was if uh, if you don't understand the terminology uh, Moa and MRAD, if you check out my video number four where I explained uh, what minutes of angle and milliradians were, you can see this is where the angular measurement comes from. Uh, that is what's made you know the angles are, uh, adjusted using the uh, turrets on the scope. So that's where um, they come from. I've just added that in as an extra. But uh, say, if you haven't seen video four, uh, go back and see and have a look at that, and that will explain where minutes of angle and milliradians come from. So, that all being well, we now appreciate that we are lobbing the pellet out of the um, out of the barrel, for want of a better word, and um, uh, we, the pellet is going to be flying in an arc. So, here we can see, we know that the, uh, the scope is sitting above the barrel and we know the barrel is going to be at a different angle to the line of sight of the scope. So therefore, in normal circumstances, we can accept, uh, obviously depending on range, but we'll come to that later, but um, in normal circumstances, we can accept that when the pellet leaves the barrel, it is below the line of sight of the um, scope so therefore because we're lobbing it up it will rise up and it will cross the point of line of sight of the barrel and that point if we place a target there that will be our near zero point so if we have a target at that near zero point and we place our crosshairs in the center of the target um, without any outside factors affecting the flight of the pellet, we would expect the pellet to hit the center of the target. That pellet will then continue to fly up in the arc and eventually be affected by gravity and start dropping. So as it drops, it will then pass through the line of sight of the scope at a greater distance so we end up with the second zero point, the far zero. 
And at the far zero, again, if we hold the crosshairs on the centre of the target, we would expect the pellet to hit the bullseye. And then eventually the pellet will continue until um, it hits the ground. So you can see then, um, at the point where the flight of the pellet is above the line of the sight of the scope, it's going to, if we put, if we place a target anywhere between the near zero and the far zero, and we aim our crosshairs at the centre of the target, we would expect the pellet to hit high on the target. So in order to get that pellet to hit the target where we want it, we're going to have to lower the crosshairs and hold them under the centre of the target, what we're aiming at. So we would use an aim point that we've shown in the definitions that we would refer to as a hold under. Outside of those points, before we reach near zero and after we've exceeded the far zero range, the pellet is below the line of sight, so if we aim the crosshairs at the target there, we would expect the pellet to hit the target low. So in order then to um, hit the, uh, to have the pellet hit the target where we want it, we need to raise the crosshairs up and hold the crosshairs above the target, so therefore we need to use a hold over. So in this scenario, all these ranges along the line of sight we would either need to have uh, to know what our hold over was or and our hold under so that tends to make things a little bit complicated because we've got to try and remember which part we need which part we use our hold under um, aim points for and which part we use our hold over aim points for so that's how we get two zero points. But if you consider, wouldn't it be far simpler if we just had one zero point? So let's look at that. Okay, so this is where we have one zero point. And in this example here, in most situations with a 177 caliber air rifle, you would have one zero point if you set your range to 25 yards because the flight of the pellet will come up it will roughly follow the line of sight for a period it might slightly go over but not anything to uh, uh, not in a, that great a distance to worry about might be a point of impact change of say um, 0.1 or 0.2 of a millimetre or even a millimetre not really going to make much difference. So you can see here because we've only got one zero we call that the far zero we've got no near zero and because the pellet never flies above the line of sight of the scope we're never gonna hit high unless we hold the uh, unless we aim high above the target. The pellet if we use um, a crosshairs, if we point the crosshairs at the target, the pellet is either only going to strike uh, the ball or it's going to hit low. So in order to get the pellet to hit the target where we want it, we're only ever going to have to worry about holdovers. We don't have to worry about hold unders at all. Now one thing to, to uh, note on this uh, diagram as well is you can see that the top of the curve, the curve is such that when it meets the line of sight line from the scope, it actually follows that line for a period. So you can see that there isn't one distinct zero point. There is a range of distances where a crosshair shot is that close to the zero that it's going to hit the target. So now we understand this, what we need to do, particularly for HFT, if you're, um, if you're, if you're target shooting at a set distance, then you can zero your, your uh, rifle at that distance and uh, you don't have to worry. You're always going to be using your crosshairs. But as we've seen 
because of the trajectory of the pellet. And because in HFT we can't adjust our scope, so we can't make any adjustments to the turret. Um, we need to develop what we call a range card, so we know where our aim points are for the different distances for the targets that we might come across on a course. Now on an HFT course under UK HFT rules, the targets will be from eight yards out to 45 yards. So this is what, what a typical range card would look like. And as you can see on the crosshairs there, uh, that's the flat portion of the curve. So a crosshair shot on this range card would hit a target from 18 yards out to 25. From 25 yards, the pellet's gonna start falling again. So therefore we've got our aim point at half mil dot for 35 yards, one mil dot for 40 yards, and one and a half mil dots for 45 yards. And on the, on the left hand side, of the, um, of the reticle, the range card there. This is before we reach the zero. So you can see there that uh, we've got our aim points, our holdover aim points for 13 yards, 10 yards, nine and eight yards. Now, if you were hunting or if you were um, shooting any other discipline where you could adjust your scope in between shots, you can achieve this just by adjusting your turrets, by working out, <coughs> oh, excuse me, by working out how many clips, how many clicks on your turret uh, would lift your aim point up, say from half mil dot to 25, uh, to the 25 yard uh, crosshairs. So you could make, make an adjustment on your elevation turret, that's the top one, to, um, so that you could align up your target with the crosshairs at 35 yards or 40 yards or 45 or whatever. And um, that tends to be what uh, shooters in uh, FT do. And they will either know how many clicks or they will have a little strip stuck to the, um, the turret um, on their scope so that they can make the adjustment once they've worked out what the range is. So there we go. Um, I hope that was not too difficult to understand. Trying to make it things as simple as possible. Keep things simple. So that concludes today's lesson. Every day's a school day, as they say. But fortunately, no homework. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Uh, next video, we're actually going to be doing some shooting, getting out on the range, and we're going to be zeroing a rifle. So hope to see you then. In the meantime, don't forget, subscribe, hit the like button and uh, let anybody know about this video that you think might benefit from it. See you next time.